says, how does a person practice detachment? All right, so the way I do that is uh, using the Bankston method. That's a great question. So with the Bankston method, I have a list of 20 things that I'm very attached to. They, I clearly want them. And they're good things, I think. I want to be healthy. I want to have good community. I want to have 100 cancer cures. I want to have, I have like 20 different things on my list. And these are the things that I'm really, really attached to. So the way I practice detachment is I actually attach to things first. Because just to try to be detached leads to a very ungrounded stance in life. I found that that's like the problem with people that are too spiritual is they just can't get things done and they're not able to affect the physical. So, because you have to attach to the physical. But then for the miracles to come, you have to detach. So first is to make sure you're attached. So you get clear about what you want, your goals, your dreams, your aspirations. You're very clear the states of feeling, the feeling states that you want more of. Maybe you want more peace. Maybe you want less anxiety. Maybe you want feeling of security. Maybe you want more joy. Um, and then if you want these feelings, what would it look like if you were actually to take a picture of it? Like, what would that look like? So you bring it down to earth. All right, so I get really, really, really super attached. But then for each of those little goals and dreams that I have images of, I give it up to, um, to my maker, to God. I actually take the picture and hand it to a deity. And I ask it for this or something better. And then it comes back to me changed. And that helps me attach even more to it because I feel like it's like God and I are on the same project. Okay. And then I put it in my rapid image cycling list and I spin it. And when I'm spinned, spinning, I'm simultaneously attached because I, I know that there's stuff that I want on that list. But I'm also um, detached because I'm just in the here and now. Like right now I'm cycling my list. But I'm talking to you thinking about how I want to frame this discussion and I'm very much in the here and now. I'm sitting in front of my gong. I'm ready to do the healing in just a few minutes. So I'm detached from my de from at least 20 of my desires. Right now I think there's like 30 things on my list. So I'm detached from at least 30 of those desires. So that's how I do it. And then when I'm actually doing the healing, so say I was working on my partner, like Greg does, who asked the question. <sighs> he probably wants her to live a lot right and so Greg when your hands are on her and you're cycling you're probably detached from everything except your tremendous tremendous desire to help your wife and I would think that the way to detach from that is to open your heart to the possibility of healing and to know that her healing is on your cycling list and then to with an open heart get into an observational space. So a lot of people to get detached, they cut off their heart and they get very clinical and thinking about stuff, which is a way of detaching for sure. But it usually cuts off the healing to not have your heart involved. And your heart can just be loving your wife and giving her full permission and you full permission to have whatever experience they need at this time. And that's actually a good thing to say. I accept whatever experience I need at this time. I accept whatever experience I need at this time. And then whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable, whether it seems like it's working or it's not working, you're just present with that. And all your desires of having her all better and um, all the other things on your list are whirling around at the speed of light or faster in your consciousness. Okay. Um, one more thing about that is that I learned this from watching two-year-olds. Um, if, if you've ever been to a two-year-old's birthday party, they can't share their toys, their new, new gifts. They just can't. Until they've had them for like a minute or 10 or a day. And so the same kids that they couldn't, toys that they couldn't share with, after they've played with them a little bit, maybe the, the next day the very same birthday party participants came over and uh, now they can share their toys. It's almost like they couldn't share them until they were 
attached to them because they were told that, oh, I have this new toy because it's my birthday. And when you're two, you're old enough to, to know that. So they're mine, but they're not really mine because I haven't played with them yet. I haven't done it. So they needed to physically attach to them, to play with them, to become participating with them. And then they can give them away. All right. But I think that's a, I think that was an original thought by me. I, I don't know if anybody else has ever thought that, but but I don't remember being taught that, except from, from learning from two-year-olds. Um, so it's very important if you're doing the Bankston method and doing rapid image cycling to have your selfish desires on there. Like what would, what would float your boat if you really, if you, um, you know, from your current perspective and get very clear about that. And then I like handing images over to um, higher powers to get tweaked. And then they come back to me and then I really feel like I'm, it's a team effort because what I want also wants me. So it's, that's another level of attachment because it's not all about me. I'm, I'm certainly on board with it. So I'm attached in that way, but um, it's a, it's an evolutionary effort from the forces for freedom and goodness in the world. Yeah. All right.